this. And Wollandilly Council have asked us to um, come along and just give a talk just in terms of supporting um, children through grief um, for the parents. So we'd like to thank the council for inviting us. And um, I guess tonight's really, you know, while we're um, trained in, in grief, loss and bereavement, um, we're not the experts on your children. You're the experts on your children. And I'm sure that you've been providing the support, all the support that you can at this stage. Um, I know the school has also been involved, the community's been involved, council's obviously involved as well. So I'm just here to provide some extra information, um, leave some resources as well for people, um, and um, we can certainly be contacted if there's any further questions um, that you have. So I thought I'd just start by um, looking at some common um, responses to grief. It really impacts every area of our life. So, you know, thoughts, emotions, um, behaviours, our physical being, um, our social life, our um, assumptions and beliefs about the world. And, you know, given the circumstances, it's just, you know, unbelievable I guess you know that that um, children have lost their lives and so it's you know it's turning things upside down it's it's hard to to grasp um, for everyone adults and children alike um, so and I think you know at the moment everything's really new and unreal and the reality of what's happened may not even really penetrate until a few months down the track. So, you know, when things seem to be getting back to normal for, for everyone else, you know, we can still be sitting in our grief. So when we think about, you know, the impact that grief has, often um, what will dictate the intensity of the grief is about the relationship that you had with that person that's died. So, you know, close friends are going to be, you know, more impacted than perhaps someone who just, you know, maybe casually knows them. So just be thinking about those things as well, that intensity, um, you know, will change. Obviously shock, disbelief, and particularly in the way that these deaths have occurred, um, it's just really out of the ordinary. So some of the impacts of grief are things like, you know, poor concentration, um, difficulty remembering things, disruptive behaviours, um, fear, anger, regret, confusion, sadness and anxiety. A lot of people, um, yeah, don't really recognise either that there's physical symptoms often with grief. And so some of those things might be headaches, um, tiredness, you know, fatigue, muscle aches, nausea. There can be changes to sleep and eating patterns. And I think with the physical symptoms, what we always say to people is, you know, and, and given that, you know, most of these symptoms I've just given you are things that have been quite common with COVID. So if you are concerned, it's always good to check in with your GP so and make sure that there's nothing else happening. Um, but often, yeah, grief does have very, um, very physical symptoms. So now just looking at, you know, helping kids to navigate grief, um, I think the biggest thing to do is um, to listen and talk with them. And I dare say, you know, that's something that you've already been doing. You've already been, you know, supporting them, talking to them, asking them how they are. But it's just so important that um, you listen, just listen without judgment or trying to fix things for them. And I think as a parent, it's really hard. Sometimes we just want to fix things for kids. We just want to make it easier for them. We want to take away that, that pain and difficulty. But at the moment, it's just we can't fix it for them. So it's just about supporting them, allowing them to talk and tell us how things are for them, you know, what they're experiencing Maybe even ask them, you know, what's the best way that I can support you? What do you need from me at the moment? Um, it's good to bear in mind too that, you know, some children may want to talk openly 
and other kids might actually retreat to their room. And these are both, you know, really normal sort of situations. I think it's good too, if you can, just try and respect um, their choice. If they're not ready to talk, sometimes they might need to just have a bit of space, try and process things themselves. But obviously, check in with them regularly um, because, you know, they may change their mind. So it's just about, you know, respecting that space for them but also just checking in on them, making sure that, you know, when they do want to talk and when they're ready, um, that you're there and available for them. I think sometimes it's not always easy either for kids to just sit down um, and talk when it's really hard sort of stuff that, that they're dealing with. So a few things that might be helpful is when you're in the car, you know, you're driving, you know, kids are looking out the windows, you're not actually face to face. And sometimes conversations can happen more easily in those situations. Or maybe even, you know, if you're going out for a walk or riding a bike, um, again, that sort of can take away some of that intensity um, when they're talking. The other thing to consider is, you know, that um, some children might not want to burden their parents, might not want to worry them. And, you know, obviously, as a community, um, you may well have been involved with these children who have died. You know, you, you may know them, they may have been to your homes, you may know their parents. So, you know, there may be a level of grief, obviously, that's going on for you as well. And, and the kids are like, you know, I'm worried about, you know, overloading you. So, you know, again, they may be um, happier to talk to a trusted adult, perhaps a teacher at school or um, the counsellor at school, maybe a relative um, or someone outside of the situation might be um, helpful to just be available for them. I think the other thing is that um, teens often want to talk to their peers and given this situation and the fact that these kids are all going through it together, that may be, you know, where they really want to sort of open up and talk about these things. So maybe providing, you know, that safe space for them, invite their friends over, um, allow them to sort of have a room where they can sit and talk. Um, knowing that they've got adults in the, in the next room that are there and available for them if they need that extra support. I think, too, it's really good to recognise that um, everyone grieves differently and it, that's a really normal thing. So you might find that um, some kids are really, really emotional and at the other end of the spectrum there might be kids who are just getting on and doing things. And both of these are really, you know, normal sort of um, ways of grieving. Often we're probably maybe, you know, more in the middle, maybe a bit of both. Um, but just to bear in mind that, um, you know, there's no right or wrong way to grieve. Um, and it's important to let the kids know this, that, you know, what's happening is, is a normal part of their, their grief, the, the way that they're feeling is normal. You know, it's good to just ask them about, um, you know, the, their friend um, who died, you know, what did they like about them? What was special about them? What sort of things did they like to do together? Um, you know, it's, it's good to sort of engage them and, and talk about their friend as well. And obviously, um, adolescents at this time are just, you know, the, the emotions are high anyway. They've got changes that are happening within them. And obviously, you know, um, external changes as well to their bodies, their emotions, their hormones, everything's happening. So grief is just basically another layer that's just on top of everything. So they can make things even more, you know, confusing and difficult. And I think the, the intense emotions that happen with grief can be really hard. You know, we, we don't like, um, you know, some of our emotions. Um, but I guess, you know, there's no right or wrong um, with emotions either. And emotions, you know, tell us something. They tell us that something's happened. You know, we've lost someone. Um, so it's good to support them to maybe just sit with that um, emotion for a little while and recognise that they come and go that it's not always this intense. It's a bit like a wave that comes in and, you know, sort of washes over you, but you know that it goes again. And so maybe just sitting and breathing through, you know, 
they can't actually describe, you know, what the feelings are. It might be, well, where are you feeling it in your body? You know, just what does it look like? Is it a colour? Is it a shape? And maybe just, you know, get them to take some deep breaths and breathe through it and then to recognise that, you know, there's shifting and changing with the emotions. I think, you know, it's fair to say, and I think it's a common thing that people say, that grief is a roller coaster ride. Um, it's up and down. And it's not, you know, I know that there's a lot of talk about stages of grief and all the rest of it, but it's, it's really... Um, not about you know stages or or steps that you have to take it's it's just something that comes in and goes out and you know it's about learning to um learning to cope with those strong emotions that come along um and then yeah just recognizing that it's it's telling us something I think the other thing that people often um, worry about is, you know, there's expectations, you know, people should be crying when they're grieving. And again, this is something that, you know, isn't always um, the case. Some people, yes, they cry, some people don't. And you'll find that the kids are probably the same, you know, that um, everyone is different in the way that they approach things. So, and again, just to let them know this is normal, you know, don't be concerned about it. I think it's really important if you can to um, help them to have some opportunities to um, express their grief and to connect. So when I talk about connection, we, we still connect with those people that we've lost. So it's about, um, you know, finding different ways. So just some of the ways that um, might be helpful are, you know, journal writing, um, creative artwork, maybe painting, drawing, sketching, um, music. Music's often really important to kids and, you know, the lyrics or, you know, just the, the music. It might be um, music that they enjoyed with their friend. Um, dance is another thing that can help, you know, it's that movement that can help them to express um, their grief. Blogs, uh, memorials, creative writing, making um, a book of memories perhaps, you know, with um, stories and pictures of their friend um, or even a memory box. So getting a box and putting in different um, memorabilia in there. So it might be pictures, it might be, um, you know, movie stubs or concert tickets, those sorts of things, um, you know, sporting things. Um, Photos. Photos are a great um, way of remembering people. Maybe making a collage um, might be helpful. Some people like to go out and walk in nature and just, you know, um, you know, process things. And um, others might do things like, you know, planting a tree or having some sort of um, memorial plaque or, you know, something along those lines. So. I guess it's it's helpful too maybe to think about, you know, if um, you want to sit down and do these activities with your child or it might be that, um, you know, they might want to get together with a group of their friends and actually do these activities. So um, some of these things are really, really helpful. I think um, the other thing that often comes up, and I think, you know, particularly in that first year, there's what we call a lot of landmines, so the firsts and things like, you know, special days and, and birthdays can be really tricky to navigate. So it might be that, um, you know, a birthday is coming up and it's really good to just be prepared to recognise that, you know, the lead up to that day might be, um, you know, really emotional and what what do your children need at that time just, you know, in the, in, to support them through that, that time. I think sometimes too the lead up to the actual day is um, or can often be um, much more emotional than the actual day itself but it's just about having a plan. Um, so it might be, you know, what do I need? Um, in terms of support leading up to that day. What do I need on the day? Well, how do I want to honour my friend on that day? Um, I think, you know, just having a plan can often help people to feel that they've got a bit more control over the situation, over those emotions that come up for us. 
Um, so, you know, things like, you know, getting them to write down, okay, what are maybe five things that I can list on my hand that I can do, you know, um, I can talk to a friend, I can talk to a parent, I can talk to a teacher, I can play some music, um, you know, I can run around outside. So whatever those things might be, it's helpful to actually identify them um, and be prepared, have that plan in place. I just want to talk a little bit about, um, you know, down the track because all these things that we've been talking about now have been things that are, you know, happening now that can be really confusing. But obviously, and I've got a, um, an information sheet here that um, will be left here that you can pick up at some point, but just some of the things that might be a cause for concern down the track. So we're talking about, you know, if, if um, you know, the your child is is maybe feeling that you know there's hopelessness there's depression there's intense sadness and when we say this we're, we're talking about you know it's affecting their life it's impacting their ability to get out of bed to have a shower to go to school um you know they're not able to do the regular things um and so yeah this is one of the things you know to be looking for down the track you know, dramatic changes in personality, antisocial and, and violent behaviours, excessive guilt or self-blame related to the death, risk-taking or behaving dangerously, inappropriate sexual behaviour, breaking the law or illegal behaviour, excessive gaming, drug and alcohol abuse, prolonged sleep and or eating problems. And again, you know, obviously, um, teenagers can be um, <laughs> loving to have their sleep, but just if it's out of out of ordinary um, sort of things for them, then it might be something that um, you need to address. Um, extended withdrawal or isolation from family or friends. So that's when they, you know, they won't come out of their room. They won't do those things. Yes, as I said before, kids may well like to have some space to think through things, but if it becomes extreme down the track, then that's something that um, you might need to then um, look at other professional help. Reoccurring thoughts of death um, and ongoing suicidal thoughts or evidence of self-harm behaviours. So if you're concerned about any of these, I think the first port of call is probably your GP have a chat to them, they may well decide to refer on to um, a psychologist or someone who is has expertise in those areas. Um, so yeah, that's just um, on that information brochure for you. Um, obviously though, we come back to your supporting them, but you also need to be aware of supporting yourself because, you know, your, um, you're going to be depleted in your resources and your energy as well. It's, it takes a lot of emotional energy when you are supporting people who are grieving and particularly with your kids, you know, you worry about them. So it's really important for you to think about looking after yourself. And I always, you know, say to people, when you go on a plane and you have the safety talk, when they tell you, you know, if the oxygen mask drops down from the ceiling, put the mask on yourself first before you can help anyone else. And it's true. You won't be able to do anything to really support these kids through this time if you don't look after yourself. So whatever that might look like for you, you know, whether it's going for a walk, whether it's meeting up with someone for coffee or, or just, you know, calling and having a chat, whether it's exercising, um, journaling, gardening, um, hiking, whatever that might look like for you, think about what you need as well in terms of support. Um, yeah, because it is hard if your resources are depleted. Um, again, you know, further help. So down the track, not, not everyone is going to need counselling. Um, you know, I think kids are more resilient than we give them um, credit for often, but just to be aware that, you know, some kids may work through this and come out the other side, they'll work through it their own way. Others may benefit from counselling down the track. So it's just, um, you know, thinking through maybe even checking in with the school counsellor, getting them to, you know, speak to the, the counsellor at school. Um, 
We offer a service for both children and adults for bereavement counselling. We're down in Barrowall. Um, and we don't require a healthcare plan to be done by a GP. You can just ring through and make an appointment with one of our counsellors. Um, there's myself and another counsellor that are there Monday, Tuesday and Wednesday at this stage. Um, you know, it may be that um, there's other things that have come up that may require your GP to be involved and they may then refer on to a psychologist. But they're all things, you know, as things, time goes by, you can determine this, you know, with your child, have a talk to them, see how they feel about maybe going to have counselling down the track and, and, you know, what they feel they need. I know this has been a lot to sort of take in, but as I said, we've got the resources we've got here for them. The youth booklet um, is certainly one of our um, biggest resources um, at the moment that, that will be helpful for the children. Um, this booklet was produced many years ago um, as a result of a similar situation that happened in Kangaroo Valley. And in the last, I think, three, four years, it was updated again. Um, so that booklet is available, the hard copy is available. Um, I've had a number of inquiries from people asking um, for passwords to print it from the website, but it is copyrighted, so we can't um, allow for printing from the website. But kids can actually download to their phone if they've got a phone or a tablet, and they can actually read it on their phone if they don't want a hard copy. Um, there are little cards that we've got here as well, and that might be something that, you know, they can have in their pocket. And again, there's a QR code, so they can just put the camera on and take them straight to the website and they can download this booklet. Um, the other couple of resources that I'm leaving here um, with council is a couple of uh, resources from the Dougie Centre. Um, and it is an American um, centre, but one is, is, you know, tips for supporting children for adults, and there's also tips for um, grieving teens as well. Just bear in mind that the, um, the um, helplines and things on these are not relevant to us in Australia because it is an American production, but in the back of the... Um, Back of our little booklet, there are resources there and phone numbers to ring. So places like, you know, Kids Helpline, um, Resilience Project, all of those are listed down here in, in the back of our um, booklets. So I've left also our cards here, which has all of our information on it, um, how to contact us, what we do. Um, so I think really that's probably about all. Obviously, if if people were here, I could have taken some questions, but um, if you do have any questions, please don't hesitate to give us a call. Um, the number is on our brochures there, 48621701. Um, we are in the office, as I said, Monday to Wednesday, but if we're not available, if we've got you know, people that we're counselling, uh, we don't answer the phone, obviously, but please do leave a message and we will get back to you, absolutely. Even if you leave a message on Thursday and Friday, the phones are checked and we will check in with you. Um, so, yes, I think that's about all for me. Terrific. Thank Thanks you. so much, Joanne.